From our Center for the Arts studio, this is your Ashland University Eagle News Update. I'm Connor Dunwoody. And I'm Chelsea Howman. Thanks for joining us. After a year-long process, Ashland University has released the results of its academic prioritization efforts. The results were released Wednesday evening. All academic programs on campus were ranked by performance and given recommendations for how they should continue in the future. While only a handful of programs were cut, several programs were recommended for enhancement, including psychology, political science, biology, and nursing. The Colleges of Education and Business were ordered to reorganize and restructure in order to increase efficiency. These results will move forward to the Board of Trustees for approval during their May meeting. AU President Bill Crothers says he is confident the Board will support the recommendations. You can read more about the prioritization results in the Collegian and at ashlandcollegian.com. After a lengthy search process, Ashland University has named its new president. Dr. Carlos Campo was chosen as the 30th president of Ashland University. Campo replaces Dr. William Crothers, who is currently serving as interim president. Campo has 25 years of higher education experience and previously served as provost and president of Regent University in Virginia Beach. Campo begins his new role on June 1st. Ohio Senate. Senate President Keith Faber visited Ashland and discussed his views on current government issues, including Common Core. I think it's time for us to say we don't need a centralized, one-size-fits-all school plan in Ohio. We need the ability to allow local school districts, particularly high-performing local school districts, to manage their own affairs. And we're getting there, and uh, it's going to show positive results. Faber also talked about adopting a philosophy that leads to freedom and independence. He closed his talk by discussing how current students should focus on things that lead to opportunity, as well as discussion related to abortion and the possibility of Governor John Kasich running for president. After more than 20 years, Vice President of Student Affairs Sue Hyman announced her retirement. She sat down to talk with us about her decision. I was able to announce a couple of weeks ago uh, uh, that I would be retiring the end of May. I want to be able to focus on um, genealogy, cooking with my husband, um, spending quality time with my mother and family, volunteer work. I haven't been able to do that the last two years with um, the number of responsibilities that we've had to have due to budget cuts and restructuring. It's time for a change here on Ashland's campus, and if you want to be a part of that change, you better exercise your right and vote for the next president for AU Student Senate. The Senate president debate was held on March 30th, and the candidates had this to say on why you should vote for them. In addition, I'm running to institute uh, common sense policies, which has included a medical amnesty policy, which would make it uh, safer for people suffering from illness, from drugs or alcohol, to seek help without uh, being punished from the university. I'm also running to, to better represent students. And what I mean by that is give them their voice back on the student conduct boards, which they've been removed from. And oftentimes at the university, when students get in trouble now, uh, they're not informed of their rights, and they have no student representation to inform them, and the administration usually is able to just take advantage of them. So as president, I would like to help students when charged with a violation from the university to better understand their rights and fight charges against them. I think that um, the majority of my platform revolves around efficiency and effectiveness. Um, I think that the Senate has been uh, very inefficient over the last at least two years since I've been on it um, and we haven't been as effective because of it and I really want to change that. I think that it's not that hard to increase our efficiency to um, cut down on unnecessary debate, um, the procedures that hold us up, that type of thing, and get down to the core issues that are at, at stake here. Things like the consolidation of academic departments, um, the core um, dorms and parking lots um, falling into disrepair. And I think that we can't really expect to be effective in influencing institutional policy if we're not effective at governing ourselves and our own body. The hope is that with priorities. You may cast your ballot on Monday, April 13th and Tuesday, April 14th in the entrance of Convo. All students are able to vote, including graduating seniors. 
With the increase on sexual violence on college campuses on the, on the rise, Ashland University is taking a stand against sexual assault. AU reporter Logan Gay has the story. Even though the campus is considered very safe, Ashland University is making changes to how they handle sexual violence on campus. These things happen at Ashland just like they do everywhere. I, we reported um, four sexual assaults last year. Um, I've dealt with two cases of dating violence this year and other staff have. Um, we've had um, sexual harassment. We have all of those things. We're not in isolation from that. And again, the goal is to train and prevent. The changes are part of Title IX. It was historically enacted in the 70s to promote equality between genders. But today, Title IX's purpose is ending sexual violence. Women on campus think that this is a move in the right direction. I think it's important for Ashland to stop sexual violence because it's getting more prominent today. Um, and it's a dangerous situation for both males and females. So in order to help um, make that go away, we need to learn how to spot it first. Knowing how to spot the signs ahead of time can save you a lot of like heartbreak and trouble and pain. Ashland University will be using the new act called the Violence Against Women Reauthorization Act that was just signed into law in March. This act mandates that Title IX now cover domestic violence, dating violence, and stalking. Ashland University is one of two colleges to put together a training program on how to handle Title IX situations. This program trains faculty and students on how they can recognize dating violence and how they can prevent it. The most important aspect is making sure that everyone involved feels respected and supported and that everyone understands their rights and that their rights are protected. Above all, above all of this, is how do you support a victim? And how do you maintain their rights? At the same time, and I, I can relate to this as a mother of sons, how do, you re how do you support everybody's rights? The goal is to create awareness in a community of respect and sexual violence. These changes will go into effect in July. Reporting for AUTV 20, I'm Logan Getz. For more Ashland University news and sports, don't forget to check out The Collegian at www.ashlandcollegian.com. And tune in every weekday morning from 7 to 9 to The Early Bird's Word on 88.9 WRDL. That's it for this Ashland University Eagle News Update. I'm Connor Dunwoody. And I'm Chelsea Howman. Thanks for joining us.